So my brothers, if you were ever even right about that, which again, if you never was, it doesn't matter. Can't you see that that time is no more? Can't you look at the world you are living in and realize that something is different in this world versus what you were taught to believe it was supposed to be like? At some point, you're gonna have to reconcile the differences between your beliefs and the reality that you see every day. And sitting inside to try to avoid reality doesn't change the world outside. Everything I'm about to say, you already know it to be true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. Although this is Philosophical Friday, actually two days before the new year, I want to wish you right now a happy new year. And I want to talk about some of the things that I know we must change as a people going into 2023. You know, and I have a small list, right? I'm gonna do this in parts. I'm gonna do this video, I'm gonna do this video in several parts because I want to make sure I take my time and be real serious, real straightforward on this. You gotta hear me on this. You you need to hear me on this. I'm not gonna have the music loud on the track because I want you to hear me. One of the things that we need to understand in life is that life is short. There are no do-overs. This is not a video game. You don't press a reset button and start it over again. It is linear, it is one way, it is 180 degrees. That's it, that's it. So you have to understand that on this linear path, when certain milestones have passed you, you gotta be able to recognize when that time has passed let it go and move forward. Thinking that you're gonna live at 40 the way you could have lived at 20 is a myth. Don't let nobody tell you that. Don't let these men tell you, wait till these women are 40 years old, they're gonna hit the wall and then you're gonna get your chance to laugh. You are gonna be 40 years old also. And trust me, you have no idea as to how you're going to look at that age. I've been fit my entire life. I hit 40 and my weight got out of control. Living the same, eating the same. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. I'm basically vegetarian, I don't, I don't eat red meat. Nothing changed, but my weight got out of control. Since the age of 45, I've been fighting constantly with trying to maintain my weight, with trying to keep it down. Barely eating, starving half to death, you know what I'm saying? I mean, your body changes, which means once your body change and you figure it out, you are gonna have to change with it. And that brings me to my first point. What do you want out of life, black men? What do you want out of life, black women? Because the times are changing. I know my channel is directed mainly at black men, but I'm gonna try to do this on both sides because everything applies to everybody. But I'm gonna start off with the black men, right? Let's, let's target in on them. Black men, y'all are gonna have, y'all, Black men, you're going to have to accept that whatever ideology or viewpoint you have in your mind of how relationships work, whether or not you was ever right, which you're not, you, you wasn't right at all. The whole thing about traditional relationships is not, it's a myth. As I said in the previous video, I'm not sure if I released it yet or not, but I've already recorded the video where I talk about the fact that 
most marriages that I know of that are successful would qualify as non-traditional. Most, we don't operate among traditions. Each individual act the way they act, they bring what they bring, and what happens is two individuals or more get together and they learn to just live together. They learn to co you know, coexist with each other. It's not about going into a relationship, changing people, making people conform to a certain systemic way of living. This is the problem that we have, man. We all want to be robots. We are not robots. We are human beings. Human, human beings don't have traditional ways to do anything. Human beings do what they do. They do how they do. They are what they are. So, my brothers, if you were ever even right about that, which again, you, you never was, it doesn't matter. Can't you see that that time is no more? Can't you look at the world you are living in and realize that something is different in this world versus what you were taught to believe it was supposed to be like? At some point, you're going to have to reconcile the differences between your beliefs and the reality that you see every day. And sitting inside to try to avoid reality doesn't change the world outside. I've been attacked by you dudes since I started my YouTube channel because y'all want me to come online and regurgitate and repeat the stupidity that you dudes are being fed every day from these channels on YouTube. And because I refuse to do it, because I choose to tell you the truth as a big brother should. You flag my videos. You report my channel. What is wrong with you? Getting me ripped off of YouTube is not going to change reality. At some point, you are still going to have to contend with reality. Attacking me is not going to change the fact that with the things you believe in your head is not real, or shall I say properly, are not real. It's not real. You live in a bubble, a fantasy bubble, where your whole world is based on red pill videos, MGTOW videos, imp more videos, Stuff like Kevin Samuels and all these people. This is your world, but that is not the real world. And if you're on the other spectrum, you follow scam artists like Polite for years, while he went from hood to hood scamming y'all talking about damn UCC filings. Promise of access, promising y'all to access secret bank accounts and all this stuff based on your social security numbers. Do you know I actually gave a speech in New Orleans a couple of, uh, about 10 years ago? I gave a speech in New Orleans. This when Polite was still kind of hot. And at that, at that, 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 that center where I gave my speech, Polite came two weeks later. But in my speech, I told the audience, do not listen to people like him. He is, con he is conning you. These things that he's talking about don't work. He, is misunder he has a misunderstanding of law, or shall I say a lack of understanding of law. He don't know what he's talking about. He don't understand half the stuff he claimed to understand. The dude is a fraud. I broke it down. I showed him what happened with social security numbers, why they don't change. What? Excuse me, I said social security number, I meant birth certificate numbers. I explained to him that the birth certificate number is just like looking at your checks. Each check has a number. That number is assigned to that particular check. Well, your number on that birth certificate is signed to that particular paper. If you go back tomorrow and get a new birth certificate issued, you will have a different number on that birth certificate which means that number is not a constant which means it can't be tied to any type of bank account because it's not a constant 
your social security number is in constant. And that is tied to an account, your retirement account, at least it's supposed to be. But your birth certificate is not a number tied to an account. And after I left that center in front of a crowd of maybe 250, 300 people, I come back to Dallas where I was living at the time. Two weeks later, Polite goes and speak at that same center. And he gets a whole bunch of people to pay him anywhere from $500 to $1,500 to do various filings under the UCC, Uniform Code of, um, Co Commercial Code. He, he convinces people to pay him to, to initiate several filings under that. And I told them when I was there that there are no filings that you could use the UCC for, not you. They didn't listen. Do you not know about a month later, not one, not two, not three, four, five, six, seven, seven people that were there when I spoke, heard me say, don't listen to Polite, went behind me and listened to Polite and paid Polite, and now they jammed up for various reasons. Now they need real legal help, and they calling me. Two of them lost cars. One of them now is about to lose their home. Another was in all kinds of trouble, about to get sued by the state for some kind of fraudulent filing under the UCC dealing with child support. I mean, it was it was several cases, right? And I mean, I'm starting to get phone calls from these people like, what did y'all do? Say, weren't you there when I spoke? They're like, yeah. Did I not tell you to not listen to this dude? Yes, Brother Kush, you did. But, I mean, he sounds so convincing. Kind artists usually do. But the true power of the kind artist is you. They can only kind somebody seeking an unfair shortcut. They can only kind the person that's looking for a cheat. That's how they con you, by offering you something that's an unfair shortcut to something else. That's how they con you. So now I'm bogged down with, with, with cases. I feel bad for charging these people now to try to undo what Paul I did, and I was able to um, help, help a few of them, but some of them the case was messed up. So out of seven, I think I was able to success successfully help four, three or four. The rest of them was just asked out. But I told them, don't listen. Now, let's bring this back to my YouTube channel. I've been on here trying to be polite about the way I talk, no pun intended. Don't listen to these people. But y'all are choosing to listen to those that don't even have the proper knowledge base, the proper understanding, the proper wisdom to give you sound advice. But the reason why you don't care is because they're saying what you want them to say. They are repeating and regurgitating the kinds of bullshit lies that you want to hear. And I'm sitting up here as your big brother once again telling you the truth like a big brother should. I am not lying to you about nothing. I have no reason to lie to you about nothing. I have no interest in trying to get rich people. Don't y'all listen to what I'm saying. Any money I, I will generate from my ventures, I'm going to try to build a community for us all. I'm going to try to get farmland for us all. I have no interest in getting rich. I've been there. I'm not going to brag, but I've been there. I've been there, lost it, been there again, lost it again. I mean, I don't trip. I am here to just help my brothers and sisters, but y'all don't want to hear brothers like me talk. Y'all want to live in your fantasy world online and reject the reality. So I'm going to ask again, what is it that you want my brother, do you want to get rich? Is it fame you want? Whatever it is you want, you have to understand that you have a very small window to achieve these things. 
Don't point at the exceptions because the exceptions only prove the rule. Do you not realize that most of the rappers back in the early 80s, back in the late 70s, early 80s, they were teenagers. Teenagers. When you look at NWA and all that, teenagers. When you look at EPMD, you got to chill. Teenagers. When you pull up the famous, the symphony, you know what I'm saying, with Marley Maul, with Big Daddy Kane, and Cool G Rap, I think they range from 14 or 15, 14 or something like that, 15 or 14, to maybe 23. That was the age ranges. Teenagers. Y'all gotta understand that, that life is short and them stages come and go. Athletes start retiring at, at, at 30, bruh. 32, 33 years old. They start leaving the industry. They leave the games. Why you think you're gonna wait till you 35 to live? You've missed that window. You can't relive it. Because everybody changes later on in life. The girls are not gonna be the same as older women. You are not gonna be the same as an older man. I basically retire from street life at 27 years old. All these bullet holes I got, these knife wounds, all these fights I talk about I've been in, I was young. All this stuff took place between the age of 11 and 27. All the gats I carry, all the bang outs I've been in, I was young. Going from state to state, hustling, got girlfriends in this city, girlfriends in that city, I was young. I haven't had those kinds of experiences in over 25 years. It's been a long time. You have a very small window to do things in. And when that window passes, you've got to adapt to the reality of your now. The women as they are, this is your now sitting around talking about how they supposed to be is stupidity. Forget how they supposed to be. This is how they are now. What are you going to do about it? You can't force them to change. And you selling your soul to the government and the powers that be in white supremacy by way of Ray Peel and MGTOW. This is not going to change the way women live their lives. Because the same power that controls the white man on that side is controlling the entire system on every side. It's all one system. Y'all tend to forget that. Y'all sit around and, and let these cold words come out your mouth. The liberal media and these conservatives. And, and these, it don't matter. It's all one system. Whether you vote Republican, whether you vote Democrat, it don't matter. It's all one system. And this system is no place for us. Men or women. You black women have sold us completely out. Black women have traded on us. And I know how hard black men will go for their little sisters. I know how hard black men will go for their aunts and their mama and their female cousins. Growing up, there was nothing we didn't do to protect the girls around us or the ladies in our lives. A dude had better not so much as curse my mama out when I was coming up. I was going to be in a juvenile penitentiary. This is why even when we call ribbing back home, you know, some of y'all call playing a dozen, you know. Even then, by the age of 12, mama jokes was off limits. Grandmother jokes were off limits. 
You couldn't crack on no female in a man's family. It was a fight. I know how we are behind black women and it's a shame it's distasteful that black women will grow up and stab us all in the back just so they can be around white folks, just so they can claim to be with the white folks because really, you are only being with them vicariously. They never accepted you as their own. You've never been a part of that white woman's movement, but you will throw us under every bus you can find. You will lay us down and you will go steal a tractor to roll over us with. Just so that you can be in par, in line, in agreement with these white women. Y'all have sold us out and you black men are doing the same under this red pill. Y'all are doing the same thing under the guise of, 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 of this manosphere, sitting around all day crying about what they don't do for black men. Stop crying and be a man. Get up and take what's yours. You don't demand it. You don't require it. You don't request it. You go take it. We can't make progress because there's not enough of us on board that's willing to make the efforts towards real progress. Because now you gotta sacrifice something. See, but what you don't understand is that you're already sacrificing. Every day that you spend online crying about women, crying about the government, crying about black what black men don't get, crying about how they treat black boys, crying about, you know, how black women are dis discriminated against and black women are mistreated. And every day you spend crying, that's another day you don't spend doing. That's another day you don't spend making strides towards actually changing not only your life, but the future of our people. So what is it that you want? You're not going to get rich more than likely. You can sit here and live vicariously through these lightweight uh, millionaires that y'all have made rich on YouTube. But that little money they got ain't gonna last either. Because the second the tides turn and they become irrelevant, they gonna burn through them little two, three million dollars they didn't made off of y'all. It's not gonna last. Losing money is way easier than it is to make it. Trust me, I made it slowly and lost it fastly, <laughs> twice. But y'all can sit here and live vicariously through these strangers. Or you can try to live your life for you. And you can try to set something up for the future. You can start caring about humanity. If the window has passed you, get on board with something different. Stop sitting around crying about this stuff. You can't control what nobody else do with their life. Why you worry about it so much, man? Stop it. Stop it. I just heard Amber Rose, and I'm gonna do a video talking about this, going off on these dudes. Asking them point blank, why do you care about what these women do with their lives? And the dudes talking about, well, I mean, because they messing themselves up. Amber's like, why do you care? They messing up for who? If, if it's their life to mess up, it's their life to mess up. Acting like them dudes, them, you see, you dudes are so fake, they're sitting around acting like y'all care about this. But the truth of the matter is, what y'all want, y'all want these thoughts and Instagram type girls to be your wife. That's what you want. See, y'all don't wanna admit that y'all are attracted to those women. The sorts of women that I will walk past. I don't care how good they look. Cause I'm about energy. I don't deal with trash. I don't care if it is clean trash. I don't want it. You dudes are fake. 
You don't care about the women. You're trying to get them to conform to a way that's more palatable and pleasing to you, that's more beneficial to you. They are not going to do it. So now what? What's your next move? They're not going to do it. You will stay online till you're 45 years old crying about women till you turn into a damn incel, snap out and go on a shooting spree? That's what you're going to do? Because that's your future. Do you not see the number of young men we have? And now we're starting to see young black men committing these spree shootings. Do you know how odd it is for a 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, anyone under the age of 50 should not be that wrapped up in nothing, but let alone somebody under the age of 25. The best years of your life, you 15 to 25, the best years, your prime, and you're around here plotting shootings? All these women walking around with yoga pants on and you're out here plotting shootings because you let somebody feed you hateful, angry ideology so much that now you have exploded. That's why it's called stochastic terrorism. Look it up. Stochastic terrorism. They have turned you into a stochastic terrorist by feeding you all of this hatred all these years through Red Pill, MGTOW, If More, and all this stuff. Now, you are just about to explode. You are a statistic now, waiting to happen. Live your life, what is it that you want? So, my first New Year's message, and I'm gonna do about four of these, four or five of these, I don't know how many. My first New Year's message to you is this. Ask yourself, black man, what is it that you want? Black woman, what is it that you want? Then understand the timeline that's required to achieve that because we don't have a lot of hours in a day the way we live right now. Again, that's another thing I try to get y'all to understand. The reason why I have so many adventures in those younger years because I was a street dude. I didn't work a job. You cannot do the stuff I did if you gotta go to work eight hours, ten, which is really 10 hours a day. You have no life the way we live right now. And instead of y'all trying to get out of this madness, y'all are trying to figure out how to, wait, uh, how to make the madness work for you. It's not gonna work for you. It's not designed to work for you. You work for you. And you find like-minded people and y'all work together for y'all. You don't do it for their benefit and they shouldn't do it for your benefit. Y'all should do it together for your own benefit. You got to be selfish. But that's another topic. So I'm going to ask again, black man, what is it that you want? What is the timeline to achieving that? Is it achievable? And now that you're faced with the reality of the now, what are you willing to do right now? Are you willing to sacrifice your reality, your now, for the fantasy of what tomorrow might be? Or are you willing to try to work in both, live in the now and try to prepare for tomorrow? That's your choices. Black woman, same thing. But you, you have sold us out hard, but sisters, ooh, it's really hard, it's really hard to ride with y'all because all of these breakdowns begin with the black woman. Y'all were the ones who joined feminism instead of helping out the, the black community. Y'all were the ones that abandoned the black community way back in the 50s and 60s. The black woman did that. And y'all the main ones sit around and talk about racism and critical race theory and all this stuff. Man, come on, stop it. Y'all don't care about being black. Y'all don't care about black people. All y'all wanna do is be honorary whites. So now I'm going to ask you, sisters, what is it that you really want? You want to be an honorary white? Then denounce the black community. Denounce black people. Just go ahead and just say how you really feel. Leave us alone. Stop tormenting the brothers. Stop playing with the, the men that you know you don't really have any type of love for. Stop playing with them because you might be physically attracted to them or because you know you can't really cross over them and deal with the lame white boys that you actually worship and praise and honor. Stop it. 
Leave these brothers alone. Stop coming online acting like you care about them going overseas to meet women. Women. Stop acting like you care about them dating women of other races. Leave them alone. If you have no love inside of you anymore for black men, leave them alone. And black men, you do the same with the sisters. If you know you have no love no more for black women or black people, leave us alone. Let us go. So sisters, after you figure out what it is that you want and you look at the time frames, or what are you willing to do? You, are you willing to sacrifice the reality of your now for the fantasy of what tomorrow might be? Or do you want to just live in the now and prepare and work as best you can for a better tomorrow simultaneously? Because that's the only choices you have. But on both sides, it's time for us to stop having these fakers around us. The Lapeef Network, a channel full of conservative content creators, always got a crowd of Negroes over there. Y'all can think conservatives are y'all friends all you want, but they are not. Them people are not your friends. So when a person, a black man tell me, or a black woman proudly proclaim to be conservative, to me, that's alarming. That's not impressive to me. You're not saying nothing to me because you recognize the ills of the Democrats. So you don't recognize the ills of these devils you in bed with? Come on, man. What is it that y'all want? Y'all will continue to go down this path? This bus is heading off the cliff. You can see the cliff. We all can look out the window and see that we're heading to an edge. And you're sitting there, sitting there reading books and on YouTube, scrolling through videos and talking crap, worrying about sports and worrying about who getting paid this and worrying about what athlete got cut. When are you going to wake up and worry about your own life? When are you going to worry about you, black man? When are you going to worry about you, black woman? That's all I got for now on this one. I'll be back, though. Like I said, I'm going to do this in parts. But on this one, I'm done. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Till next time, I'm out of here. I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Black Alpha. But anyway, Happy New Year's and Salam.